I'm AshmeWatov.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create PHP highlighting um, just like in forums so or if I've just got a php.net um, random page up here and you see how um, the PHP code is um, all different colours um, I'm basically going to show you how to do that there is a function within PHP that allows you to do this um, unfortunately it only works for PHP so um, um, so it's not exactly going to work with, you know, HTML, um, JavaScript, you know, other languages. But um, PHP does provide a function for its own colouring, which is quite handy. So this is how to do it. Um, this is how to do syntax highlighting for PHP within PHP, basically. Um, so let's. This is just a blank page. What I'm going to first do is load up Dreamweaver here. And first of all, I'm just going to do a quick form action here, um, which goes back to itself. You don't have to do forms and stuff like that, but it's just an easier way to get it across to show you what's happening. So post, uh, forward slash form, I'm just enter this here, text area equal, text area name is equal to code. I'm not going to set any like dimensions up with this, like height and width, just want to keep it simple. So, input type is submit name, submit and value, um, submit, um, and what I'll do is just put a quick break on there. Right, so if I just open this up, we just get our little text over here with submit button to pull some code in. So what I'm going to actually do first is, uh, well next we need to actually set up some PHP. So if is set dot underscore post submit. So if the submit button has been pressed, we're going to run some code here. Right. Right, okay, so first of all, we're going to get the raw code. So basically, just the code that has been entered in. Um, so, just get exactly what the user enters, and then we can deal with this however we want. So, first of all, what I'm going to actually do is just show you something, what this looks like on its own, like, without anything under it. So, if I go... Um, um, let's just say echo highlight underscore string. This is the function which allows you to um, show the uh, code in colors basically. So if I just put in uh, raw code in here, now if I just refresh. Um, actually, I need to um, enter some code in there. So if I just use this code, perhaps, so get this PHP code here, what we've just made, and post that through. Uh, so it doesn't look like it's working too well. <laughs> um, Alright, there we go. It just took its time. So as you can see, we've got a bit of colouring here, but um, it's not very good at the moment because... Um, first of all, I'm going to show you how to get rid of this one. This one means, um, well, this highlight string has a second parameter, which is true and false, basically. Um, if it's true, then it doesn't show the return value of one. Uh, by default, it is false, so, and false does show that return value of one. So if we just, oops, I don't want to load up uh, Sony Vegas. Uh, just close that down. Um, and if I just refresh the data here, as you can see, the ones disappeared. All right, so now what we need to do basically is, if we take away these PHP tags um, from the um, the submit box here, so if I just make it a bit bigger. Um, so basically, if we don't have any PHP tags within this, um, as you can see, it doesn't get coloured in. Um, so you have to have PHP tags. So what I'm going to show you now is a simple if statement um, to actually check whether the user has entered um, any uh, PHP tags. So you could just leave it as that and um, tell people that it only works with PHP tags, but you know some people might not. 
So what we can first do is get, we need to actually get the first and last part of the script, well of the posted string basically, so to see if um, a tag has been entered at the start and has been entered at the end. So if I just create a first variable here, um, and that's basically going to be um, sub str, and what we need to put in here is a HTML um, entities on here just to uh, get rid of any, uh, just so we can stop the code from executing basically um, because once this gets posted in it'll, it'll execute so um, done scope post um, code and then what we need to do is specify the length so the start is going to be started at 0 and the next one is going to start at 8 now you're probably wondering um, there's only f there's only 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 characters in PHP but um, as code is as code is brought through to the browser the browser interprets this the less than symbol not has not ha, not has the symbol itself but has um, this basically so it's an and um, if I just show you outside of PHP so it will come up and um, as you can see we get this here which is and LT and a semicolon that's basically code for a less than symbol so now if we count we've got one two three four five six seven eight okay and we can do the same for the last so last um, code and this time we want to start somewhere a little different now you're probably thinking what's going on here but if you put a minus and a five Basically, minus means start from the end and work back. So, you're probably thinking again, um, there's only two in the last, but like I showed you up there, um, the less than symbol is actually coming out to be four. So, um, that makes up the five. Right, so, um, we can now just do a an if statement here. Um, to say if first um, doesn't equal and then we can put that at um, like that and then um, PHP in there um, so if it doesn't we're going to say new code is equal to um, PHP just like that backslash n backslash n that will just move it down to lines so pretty much like we've done here we're on here, backslash n, backslash n. So we're moving the code down two lines. Missing a line out, basically. Um, and then we can just concatenate onto the, the raw code. Right, so that's it. And we can do the f same for um, the last. So if last, um, I have to change this. So um, this one will be now a question mark and gt for greater than um, if it is new code if it doesn't equal that we're going to set new code to um, but we actually need the raw code in front this time so like that and then we're just going to go uh, backslash n backslash n and then the ending tag right I'm just trying to visualise this in my head as I'm going along. Um, so now that we've done that, so then we can say if is not set um, new code because you know we want to see if uh, any new code has been applied, and if it's not, basically we're going to say um, we're going to actually set new code. Um, from the raw code so we're always getting new code basically a new code variable then we don't have to use the raw code being put through um, so now basically you can just do new code here and this would work nice so refresh oh, so as you can see the uh, starting ones not appeared we've got the last one on because we didn't enter that but the first one has not come through. Let me just uh, have a quick check to see if I've done this right. 
Uh, I've just realised um, this I've set like this. That should be set just to one to set, but I don't think um, that is going to fix the problem. No. Right. Okay. So I figured out which is um, on this last one. You've got new code equals raw code. This should be new code equals new code again, so we can overwrite the actual code. Because at the moment we're just sort of um, just instead of getting from this new code here, we're actually just getting the raw code not posted through. So this first if statement wasn't being counted in a way. So now if I just uh, refresh the page, there we have it. Now as you can see, because of the uh, what we've done. So if I just uh, actually just get rid of that, copy this back through. There we go. It's gone all right now. Right. So next thing. Well, that's basically all you have to do to do that. But what I'm going to show you now is how how to add a bit of style to this. So if that's all you wanted to know, then you can just leave uh, close the video down here and. Uh, start watching or if you want to actually know how to create something a bit similar to this with um, a little box just a bit more style so it looks a bit more like a code box basically and um, so what we're going to do is open up Dreamweaver and first of all I'm going to outside these um, if uh, PHP basically I'm just going to open up some new PHP and um, I could have done this just within the same but just to make it look a bit better and if you're using this code elsewhere this is what you would do so if is set um, new code Let's open them up Oops. PHP and close it off of there um, actually what I might do is just do it like this and div ID just ignore the error for now um, code title area forward slash div right there and then we can PHP echo um, we'll put a break on the uh, PHP code Another break there. Okay, um, so that's fine like that. And you're gonna give here, um, and then we'll do another div ID um, for the code area. For slash div, and then in here PHP. Um, echo new code. Okay, you'll see why I've not done the. I like string up here because we're going to change this now to new code is equal to this so we don't have to type in highlight string every time we want to do and display the new code okay so underneath this div we now need to just close off that okay so this basically will only show up um, if new code exists which means if also the submit button has been pressed because if that's been pressed then uh, a new code variable is created um, so this might show a little better than what we had originally um, well it won't show a little better obviously but um, I'll just check what's in here okay submit especially it looks pretty much the same we've got PHP code up here for the title which I'll show you in a minute how to style that um, and basically it looks the same but this is actually contained in a div now which we can actually style so back into Dreamweaver um, if I just say go a Above this form here, and just do some style type equals text forward slash CSS. Um, if you're doing this on an actual website, then I would recommend using an external CSS. But seeing as this is just simple um, and a tutorial, I'm just going to keep it on the same page. But I would put this style in a separate CSS document, right? So, code area actually we'll do the title first so code title area um we're going to move this in margin left and um, we want to move it in 10 pixels and we're just going to bring the font size down a touch to 
14 pixels. So if I just refresh this, it basically looks like that. It goes slightly down, smaller a bit, and just moves in slightly off the edge of the page. Um, and that's basically what we're going to do now for, well, as well for the code area. So, um, once again, margin dash left, 10 pixels, move it in. Um, we're going to leave the front size as normal. Uh, we'll create a background colour, um, let's say of DD. That just gives us a slightly... Uh, DDD, that just gives us a slightly darker, well lighter grey more than darker white. And um, basically if I just refresh this and show you, refresh, as you can see it's not worked. <laughs> Let me just have a quick check. Alright, uh, I know why I've put a capital C on code area in the div tag, so now if I refresh and there we go we sort of get a different colored background and the php code has been moved into the uh, a bit as well so to carry on i'm going to put a width on this of um 750 pixels just so we can bring in the uh the background color just slightly bit more Okay, um, and we want to create an overflow um, of X. So overflow dash X is auto. This basically means um, if the code goes beyond this edge, it will create a scroll bar. So basically, if I just uh, take this code we've done here. And basically just add a load of comment lines or something onto there something like that submit I can see um, as it's gone further across this we've just made it the scroll bar and um, comes up so the user can scroll across just like that but let's just get it back to normal um, so that creates a scroll bar. I want to do some padding now around it of 10 pixels. This will just bring everything just slightly in a bit more and make it a bit more, you know, a bit of padding around the edges so it's not flush up against the edge of the actual colour background, the edge of the div rather. Um, and then we're going to create a border of inset. This will create just a slightly bit better effect. Um, Alright, that didn't work. Let me just have a quick check. Spell it right. And that gives a bit of better of effect as it looks like it's something that's within, something that belongs in the code area basically. Um, so that's a bit more of a style, style of what to do. So I hope this video was some use to you and I hope I've shown you how to create um, a decent enough style so that it actually looks like um, this is actually some code rather than just being displayed on a white background or a page just in a just as colors basically um so thanks for watching and i will see you next time